Eden Terzic. He has been linked with being Hunan Lopetegui's replacement. Who even knew there was a job up for grabs anyway? I did a video about it earlier on, on the forum channel, my initial reactions. But as I said in that video, I'm going to pick Gio's brain on this one because uh, he's a man that knows a thing about uh, Terzic. I think uh, it's certainly fair to say because, as many of you will know already, he was Slaven Bilic's assistant at West Ham before he went and did amazingly wonderful, almost amazingly wonderful things at Borussia Dortmund and now it would appear via a tweet from Florian Pretzenberg via Sky Sports News Germany. It's now um, set the West Ham world on fire with everybody thinking, right, that's it. Lopetegui's out and Terdic, sorry, sorry, can't say it like that. <laughs> Terdic is like scratching a poo. Um, sorry, I suppose, probably want to restart the video, didn't you? Uh, Terdic, Terdic. <laughs> He's coming into West Ham. Over to you, Gio, my word. Um, what do you want to know? What do you want from me? Uh, Was there a question I there? To, oh, I, I want you to pronounce the name, ideally. Yeah, Terzic should be fine. Excellent. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, well, I, I mean, first of all, this wasn't on the list of the, this leaked list of, of uh, Tim Stiton's um, suggested replacements for David Moyes. Was he ever on your list? No, not really. Um, it's not that I don't like him. Because he's got an affiliation to West Ham and Slavin Bilic, I wanted him to do well, and I was pleased to see him do well at Dortmund. And you could see how much it meant to him, the success and near success he did have. Because he's a, he's, a, he's a Dortmund fan, Terzic, so when he was over there, it had that little bit of extra attachment for him, um, being manager of his boyhood club. And also he had history at Dortmund before he left Dortmund to go to Besiktas, with Slavin Bilic, and then when Bilic recruited him, I can't recall who was in charge of Dortmund at the time, he said to Slavin Bilic, I'm loaning you him, because he will be back, and right enough, he ended up going back to Dortmund, kind of thing, because they always had high hopes for him, Um because he started out as a scout, I mean, it's, it's a, I guess a traditional thing, and more in Germany than it is in England, but started as a scout, he was an analyst for Dortmund, he was even technical director at Dortmund for a short period of time as well, because he, he had... He took temporary charge of Dortmund and then he went back to being technical director and then, you know, replacing the guy that he brought in to replace him <laughs> when he was temporary charge. So I've always wanted to see him do well. And he, I guess you could say he had success and some, a little bit of success as well. Won, won the German Cup, bottled the league. Like you cannot say he didn't. He absolutely bottled it with, uh, you know, he had all they had to do was win on the final game of the season. They, they, they'd win the Bundesliga and they, they drew. So they lost it on. But without difference. Bellingham, they, they missed Bellingham, I think, on that game. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? If if it was Spurs, we'd all point and laugh. You know, if they were missing Son, we wouldn't say, oh, if only they had Son that day. You know, you've, you've got to... Mm. And then, obviously, champion, got to the Champions League final, which was, which kept him in the job a little bit longer, I think, because the league campaign wasn't going too well and there were some concerns over the style of play and the senior players at Dortmund weren't happy with the style of play either. So I think this, the Champions League campaign kept him in the hot seat, which is familiar to us at West Ham, perhaps, that the manager maybe got to stay longer because of the success of European football. And whilst that competition was going on, he was maybe untouchable to some extent. Um, would I take, would, did I want him in the summer? No, because I wanted a vast upgrade on David Moyes. Now, let me just add context here very quickly before someone starts smacking a keyboard. My, cons my, my issue with Moyes was purely style of play and... He was pragmatic at <laughs> he was pragmatic at Dortmund. When you watch Dortmund play, they were not swashbuckling attacking football as Gonzo uh, to use a Gonzo phrase. They were not wiping the floor with teams. It was not gung ho heavy metal football that Jurgen Klopp had or anything like that. And hence, why he fell out with Hummels and Royce because they wanted to play more progressive football. They said, "We're Dortmund. We should be." dominating teams should be winning games at canter and we're not doing that because out of possession Dortmund were quite happy to sit back and let the other team have the ball and I think that's why they were successful in the Champions League because they came up against PSG sit back and we'll counter attack and it suited them some of the teams that they played in the Champions League it suited them and it suited them against some teams in the Bundesliga but when they came up against the lesser ones, perhaps, that they were expected to be. I think that's where there was maybe issues with Terzic's style of play um, as a head coach. But wouldn't he necessarily know which 
brand of cowpole that um, Fulkrug would need and get him fit and playing. He, he was okay with Fulkrug. Fulkrug was okay at Dortmund. Um, he wasn't, you know, he was the manager at Dortmund when Fulkrug was there. Um, but he was part of the reason that Fulkrug had to leave Dortmund because it wasn't a, a big success. He was all right. And when they were sitting back, that's when you saw the best of Fulkrug because they were you, the Champions League final is a prime example. You look at the way Dortmund played, and Fulkrug was key to those tactics where he was dropping back and causing problems for the centre backs. But again, in the Bundesliga, teams don't teams fear Dortmund, so they sit back and say, "Right, come on to it." And then that's where there was issues with Fulkrug because the, Dortmund weren't putting crosses in; they were trying to do the nice passing and football and stuff like that. And Fulkrug wasn't really the the striker for it. And you look at what Dortmund are doing this season, post Terzic with Juvasi up front, who's got four or five goals in the league already now, scored again on Friday night. Um, so the striker situation, new striker, new manager at Dortmund has, has improved since Terzic left and also since Fulkrug left, which I don't know if that tells you more about Terzic or Fulkrug, but there you go. Yeah, yeah quite, quite possibly um, a little bit of both. I mean, it is worth pointing out that you talk about laughing at Spurs. We did have one big laugh at Spurs uh, historically, which if you remember when Leicester won the league, we laughed at Spurs because Spurs managed to come third in a two-horse race. Yes. Now, the, you can actually almost apply a little bit of that to last season because Bayern Munich had, had won 10 or 11 Bundesligas back-to-back, had won 20 out of the last 23. The record, whatever, even if that's not quite right it's about right it was always meant to be Dortmund that were meant to smash them it, it, the Leverkusen thing was was never meant to happen so I do think Leverkusen being the ones to topple Munich last season made it look doubly bad for Dortmund and you're quite right the the Champions League final probably um, was the one saving grace there so where do you think I don't mean Sky Germany where do you think if there is any interest in this guy and you can tell me afterwards whether you believe there is, but where would it be coming from? Would this would this be a, a Sullivan special or or a, or a Tim Steiton? Do you think? Uh, I think it's a combination of both, actually, because if we go through the traditional shortlist uh, filters of David Sullivan, and at the top it's free, well, he ticks that box. Premier League experience mm. was that all right? What happened? What happened there? So it's, mm. Like you can is it Premier League experience? He was, you know, assistant to Slavin Bilic, so he's been in he's been at West Ham, but yeah. it, he's not been yeah. a manager in the Premier League. So it's it's a bit of a you can debate whether you class that. It's mm. it's some form of Premier League experience, just maybe not what <laughs> Sullivan's looking for. Yeah. Um and it, you you'd imagine it might suit Tim Steiden that the head it's a head coach role and maybe it's the right t kind of head coach for Tim Steiden in, in the sense that he's used to the way that the German model works and also the fact that he's part of the German model, Terzic, whereas, you know, you look at Lopetegui and it feels like he's getting on all right with this new infrastructure, which is a guy buying in players and he gets some save and all the save. Because I think he's had that in his past, Lopetegui, you know, at Real Madrid, you don't get any say as the manager. Yeah. This is, we're buying Galacticos and that's it. Shut up. Um, so I think I think still, uh, Lopetegui's getting on okay with this new infrastructure at West Ham. There's not been any grumblings about it. There's been some finger pointing about who employed him and the lack of success. But in terms of arguing over transfers, that's not really come. There hasn't been any talk of, of that. But Terzic, like I said, has had many roles at Dortmund under a German football club's infrastructure. So when he would, if he was to come in, he would know his role and what's expected of him without even speaking to Tim Steiden. He, he would just know what his responsibilities are and what his responsibilities aren't. But I guess on <laughs> the dangerous thing is he's also done Tim Steiden's role in the past. So he might be looking at Tim and going, I'm judging you because I used to do your role. I know what's required of you. Um, so I think maybe he would actually suit what we're trying to do going forward, I guess, with Tim Steiden at the club. So I think it might tick the boxes for Sullivan and Steiden. Yeah, I mean, I think we've seen a lot of Steiden being heavily involved this season, not just obviously behind the scenes and not just talking about the private jet, 
But also, you, you see him, you see pictures of him on the pitch before the game, at half time, after the game. He was uh, going pictures... down the tunnel on Saturday, slapping everyone in the back. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely was. And um, Bowen looked none too pleased about it either. But uh, you, uh, you know what pictures are like. Sometimes you can take a picture and you, if you catch it at exactly the wrong time, you can, um, anyone, a happy person can look pissed off, can't they? So, um, yeah, I mean, I absolutely get that. But he wants to be involved. And I do wonder if having someone as as junior as as Terzic and I, I don't know when I say that I'm aware of everything that you've said about his history of being a director of football and the Champions League but I wouldn't imagine he carries necessarily the authority of a Lopetegui because I think you've got you know very much an experienced guy in his mid to late 50s who who wants to be right. Can, the, can the I just elf. counter that? Can I counter that? Because yeah. Lopetegui was a professional goalkeeper. I don't know what what age Lopetegui retired, right? I don't yeah. know what ta- what age did he go from playing to coaching. I don't know. But let's just say it was mid-30s. Let's just go yeah. down the middle and say he had a decent career. So he's had 20, he's now got 20, 30 years in the dugout, right? It, non-playing role mm-hmm. in football, he's had 20, 30 years. Well, Terzik's had... 15, 20 years experience or something because he didn't make it as a footballer. He, he made it as a footballer, but it was like fourth, fifth tier football in Germany and he decided I'm not good enough, so I'm going to get out of the game and I'm going to start focusing on a role in football that doesn't involve playing. So whilst he's younger, he's in his 40s, early 40s as well, he's younger than you. Uh, <laughs> but... oh, well, I'm not so sure. Would, would, it, would that be the first manager that's younger than you that would get the job? Maybe. Oh, I, why are we even talking about that? That's I'm not just, even a, that's not a bona fide football statistic. Just, 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 like, just, just, like, no one wants to hear. Just, they probably do. They makes probably you do. feel old, though, that stuff, doesn't it? That makes you feel old, that does. When even, well, funny enough, I hadn't even thought about it. Which West Ham um, employed a manager younger than you. That's okay, got that, that, you... Listen, listen, that is the third dig about my age from you today. I only gave you one, <laughs> pardon the expression. Um, we, we had a... a, a a most amusing um, WhatsApp exchange this morning, anyway, which, I, which I thoroughly enjoyed. But um, anyway, my point yeah. was early forties, but plenty of experience like in one playing capacity in football. Excellent. My point was that um, that I think is is probably easier to boss and boss around and take the the higher role and be the boss. I think I think Lopetegui is possibly a harder guy to 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 take the superior role ahead of, whereas us. Young fellas like myself and Turditch, we're we're not as you know we're we're younger we're we're naive we're um we're easier to manipulate and and mess around. Um, do, do you think it will happen, Gio? No. Um, to, to, in order for it to happen, there needs to be a sacking, and um, I don't see that occurring, so I can't. I think that if that listen, last ten minutes actually. Listen, if he did get sacked, right? Then mm. do I think he would be on the short list? Yes. Because one thing Sullivan doesn't like doing is sacking a manager without knowing his replacement. It's not something Sullivan tends to do. So when he decides to pull the trigger, Slavin Bilic, Pellegrini, he had David Moyes sack. Even David Moyes. Before David Moyes, his contract had come to an end, Lopetegui was in the training ground. You know, Moyes' contract was running until yeah. the 30th of June. Lopetegui didn't start until the 1st of July. But during June, he was at the training ground meeting... George Earth, he's doing overtime on the weights. So Sullivan likes to know the next guy before he sacks the current guy. And that restricts you massively because that limits you to the usually the unemployed market because yeah. you can't go poaching. A... And it backfires a little bit. Remember Adam Grant? Sullivan went all out for Martin O'Neill and the Martin O'Neill turned and I said, what are you doing, mate? You've got a manager. Piss off. Like he, Sullivan went and tried to recruit Martin O'Neill while we had Adam Grant in. Well, yeah, Martin O'Neill weirdly actually had some models about him and went no because that's a bit dirty that is um, so I think if if it's a big if and I don't think we will if we were to sack Lopetegui I think Sullivan would want somebody lined up before pulling the trigger therefore they've got to be available Terzik's there he's unemployed and what I would suggest is maybe in terms of the football, I don't think it's a drastic change. I think no. it's a bit different to what Moyes and Lopetegui do, but I wouldn't say it's like huge. It might suit West Ham more than Dortmund because Dortmund are 
possibly the biggest club in Germany. Hopefully no Bayern Munich fans are watching, but I think they're possibly the biggest supported club in Germany personally. And um, so the demands are there. The demands were from Hummels and Mark Royce. You, we must attack. We have to go out there. And regardless of who we're playing, we're, t- we're going for it. I don't, those demands might not necessarily be at West Ham. I think you get away with sitting back a little bit more because there are better teams than us. And I think everybody accepts that there are better teams than us. So he's going to go from this club with this arrogance and demand to one of, well, just demand and desperation, really. So he might actually be better fit for West Ham. Um, but who knows? Um, but I think I think there's maybe some merit in the rumour, actually, because it's come from Patrick Berger, then it's gone through Plattenberg, and it's coming out of the German side of things, that's for sure. And what I find interesting is there's going to be another, there's going to be a follow up to this because let's West Ham. If I up a second, I'm going to use you as an example on Clavin Hugh. If you do an exa- if you do an article on Clavin Hugh, whether it be about David Sullivan, about Lopetegui, about a transfer rumor, you know Sullivan's going to read that, and there's a chance you're going to get a response from <laughs> David suggest- Sullivan. I don't know so, what you're suggesting. So you won't even have to contact David Sullivan. So basically, you do an article. You're basically asking Sullivan for an answer without giving it to Sullivan. And Sullivan will sometimes respond to you privately, even though you've not asked him a question. He will see it, and he will react to that. It's so marvelous. even if this hasn't come from Tim Stiden, Tim Stiden will be well aware of this rumor, and he knows Plattenberg. So I think very quickly this rumour can get nipped in the bud. I very, totally agree. I think very exactly quickly. what I said in my, my video. Um, um, and if it doesn't on. get nipped in the bud, I think that might give a little bit of authentication to this rumour. Absolutely. Uh, just before we finish, talking about um, demand and desperation, which is what Gio alluded to earlier. Um, if you're desperate uh, for a, a bargain, then I, I demand that you head Bond over... Cheap. <laughs> Absolutely. You spot me in my flow then. Um, on, carry uh, on, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I, I demand that you head over to hammerschatstore.com where we've got a bit of a sale on loads of West Ham merch. Uh, it's it's uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of funny stuff over there. Um, and you just grab yourself a bargain. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of deals, a lot of good stuff. So, um, yeah, hammerschatstore.com. Anything that they should be looking out for on their geo? Six things that you can pre-order that will be due into Hammer's Chat HQ in the next month. We've got two different types of jumpers. We've got a full zip one with a hood, and then we've got a quarter zip one with no hood, but nice jumpers. Um, two bobble hats. In collaboration with Oddballs, big brand. Um, they're well known for their boxers. We've partnered up with them and brought a bubble hat. And next year, we'll be bringing out other items with Oddballs as well. And then you can pre-order a signed Jared Bowen shirt or a signed Sir Trevor Brooking shirt if you wish. They will all be delivered before Christmas. I've shrunk. Goodbye. <laughs>